Well, this is sort of an odd one. After a bit of a long break, we're coming back to look at yet another Ubuntu-based distribution, but this one may be interesting, as it brands itself as something of a green Linux distribution for uh, greener computing. But is it actually any good? Well, we're going to be taking a look at it right now on Linux Lounge. Indeed, this here is EnsoOS, a operating system that sort of brands itself as a simpler, greener operating system. Now, I would kind of question those claims a little bit, but we'll get onto that later. If we hop over to their website, we can see that, you know, it's sort of a nice green color scheme. It's all very simple. Um, you know, I have a screenshot of the operating system right here. Um, we can also notably see in the background that uh, Firefox seems to be using Ecosia, uh, which would be a great default search engine to use for a green Linux distribution. Um, however, in the OS itself, actually they use Google for the default search engine. I would kind of question that a little bit, but okay, fair enough. If we go down, we can see that they've sort of branded it as being quite simple. Um, I would maybe agree. Private, of course, it's a Linux distribution. Uh, you know, the power of open source is privacy in many ways. Um, it's a green operating system, apparently. It's able to run on nearly any machine that exists, including those that are no longer supported by Windows or Mac OS. I would, once again, kind of doubt that a little bit, but we'll get onto that later. We can see that they're um, sort of marked in, you know, their greeter, their desktop, their multitasking view, all things that are included and are quite nice. Um, and we see here we've got, you know, kind of how to get it installed. Um, so you've got kind of full documentation, that's always good to have. Um, and you can see the project creator down here. Very nice. Um, so before we move on to the OS, uh, a few claims to sort of dispute here. Um, with it being green, and I can kind of see the idea that they're going for here, and it is a very good one. Uh, Linux, of course, will run on older hardware than Windows, so of course that would be a good way to cut down on e-waste, which is why I like what this project is doing. However, um, sort of the issue with... Um, the way this operating system is put together is it's unfortunately based on Ubuntu and unfortunately has no 32-bit version. The fact that it's based on Ubuntu isn't too bad, but um, a consequence of that is it's a bit heavier than, say, your uh, Debian or some other operating system might be, so that might have been a better b uh, base to use for older computers. But the second problem is there is no 32-bit support. And as a result, a lot of machines that are no longer supported by Windows or Mac uh, won't be able to run this either. Now, maybe a 32-bit version is coming down the line somewhere, but I think that would be a good thing to have in order to run on older machines. Um, however, this will run on older machines as long as they support 64-bit, which should be most newer computers um, and some older ones too, I mean. 64-bit has kind of been the standard for quite a while. Um, but now on to the operating system itself. Um, out of the box, on a cold boot, it uses about 500 megabytes of RAM, so not the best, not the worst, but once you start getting things open, that increases. Uh, with Firefox, we were at about a, nearly a gig of RAM. Um, so that's not too bad, it should run on older computers. Um, when you first turn it on, you get yourself a welcome screen. Uh, this is very useful in my opinion, um, especially for new users who kind of might not know where to go to begin with. Um, you got all the usual stuff. Edit user details, change system settings, install applications, learn. Good thing to have a link to the documentation and join the conversation, which I assume yeah, it's a link to a chat room. Um, fantastic. Now, the desktop itself is a little bit on the unconventional side, but it's not necessarily complicated. Down here, you've got uh, Plank for your sort of application launcher and uh, 
with a link to expose and your applications menu and up top you have all the usual stuff you would have in a taskbar um, your battery percentage, your time etc and you have interestingly enough a uh, global menu so a bit like Mac OS or the old Unity would have had um, which I guess kind of I am getting slightly Mac-ish vibes off this system but it's kind of its own thing in many ways um, and I must say in terms of making a lightweight system that looks good I agree that this uh, system does indeed look very good and definitely looks far above the weight that it actually is which is always nice um, your expose works properly, the application launcher um, maybe takes a little longer to appear than I would like uh, although that might just be the animation um, you have quite a few nice uh, nature backgrounds out of the box which is uh, quite fitting for what this distribution is going for um, as you, for your um, software selection it's all very standard Ubuntu stuff nothing special really um, it's all quite lightweight with it being X Ubuntu, so that's a plus. Um, and if you want to get more software, this is where things get kind of interesting. It comes with what is called AppHive, and I believe this is a fork of the elementary OS software center, possibly. <laughs> but I must say, it is a very nice little software center. You've got all of your recommended apps here, so in theory once this uh, list uh, starts expanding a little bit more, um, the end user won't have to go, you know, looking up what programs to use, it should just all be right here, uh, the best open source programs. Um, it's all quite easy to install, which is fantastic, and unlike say the Ubuntu Mate um, app gallery you're not locked into the programs that are recommended uh, instead you can in fact search any uh, Linux program that you want and you can go ahead and install it and yeah all in all that's a fantastic little applications um, manager and I think you know a new user is going to have absolutely no issues uh, using that um, and to be honest, there's not a lot like else to say about this distribution, which in many ways could be a good thing. It's um, a fairly stock and standard Ubuntu derivative, but it does have quite an interesting sort of social purpose. Um, I myself, I'm kind of a believer in like sort of greener computing. However, whether or not it actually accomplishes its goals. Uh, is kind of up for debate, but I think largely, um, yeah, it's certainly a greener computing standard than, say, um, or rather, makes for greener computing than, say, Windows. Um, but yeah, that's about it, really. Would I recommend it? Um, not necessarily more so than any other Ubuntu derivative, but if you're interested in sort of what they're trying to do as a project, I would 100% uh, give them a look, um, I, mean, I think they're a fantastic project, but um, yeah, that's all to say, really thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.